budget airline AirAsia flies thousands of passengers in and out of here, Kuala Lumpur's international airport, every day. Responsible for choosing all the routes the planes fly and their destinations and negotiating all the rights with the relevant governments is senior AirAsia executive Central Ballin. For the last two years of his schooling, Central was educated in New Zealand. And then he went on to study at the University of Auckland. He says the whole experience completely changed his life. Central Ballin, thank you very much for talking to us. Your New Zealand education began in Christchurch at the private boys' school, Christ's College, and then you went on to study a Bachelor of Commerce at Auckland University. Why did you choose to study in New Zealand? I think the reason, the main reason why, uh, well, my parents chose it, uh, and I sort of agreed to it at that point, uh, was it was a place when we researched uh, many places around the world, and the conventional choices were Australia, uh, the uh, UK, and the Americas. We chose New Zealand because we, we felt it would provide a competitive edge against all those other countries. It may not have been the conventional choice, but we felt based on the fundamentals of New Zealand, it would be the right choice because of what you can learn, uh, how you can live, and it also brings you back to basics in terms of being simple in life and doing that right and not living life in excesses and New Zealand was the best place for that. You were just 15 when you went to New Zealand. How did your education change you over the next few years that followed? It was a, it was a drastic uh, transformation for me. I left Malaysia being this really timid kid. I wouldn't dare say anything to anyone unless spoken to. And uh, New Zealand within two years just transformed me. Uh, I, I grew in confidence uh, uh, due to a variety of reasons, uh, both in terms of the academic curriculum to the teaching environment, to just the general environment where I was studying, to just the country as a whole and the people I was living with. And it just transformed me. I became from this timid kid to someone who was extremely confident to almost coming home when parents were going, are you possessed by something else? They couldn't even recognize me anymore. It was very transformational for me. What did your teachers do to draw you out of your shell like this? I think they were very good at uh, building on what you were good at instead of just knocking down about what you're not good at. They were very good at building on what you're good at and like any student, there's obviously areas to improve on. They were very good at nurturing it versus in terms of knocking it down again and they were very good in sort of always trying to push the boundaries and, and if you're a child with this potential, they're always trying to, and this is where you sit in terms of actual delivery, they're always trying to shift you up. And as you reach closer, push it higher. They never, they always try and see how far can you go versus just being happy on a certain bar. And it was everything in terms of, again, the curriculum, extracurricular activities, everything was, everything was built around pushing that kid forward and building from what you were good at. As in terms of, because that will feed into your confidence and help drive you forward. In terms of extracurricular activities, what are some of your more enduring memories of your time then in New Zealand? So I left Malaysia having done almost nothing in terms of extracurricular activities, not because I didn't want to, but more because I didn't feel I had the ability to do it. I came to New Zealand and within uh, the six years that I was there, I was uh, deputy head of house uh, in only my second year in boarding school uh, and I had um, got that role ahead of all the other kids who had been there for five years. I was uh, president of the Malaysian Society in the University of Auckland, which was the biggest club on campus at that point. And finally, I was uh, treasurer of the Auckland University Students Association, where I had to campaign in front of 20,000 students and uh, get that position. And all this were roles that I would not have done if I'd gone to any other country, because New Zealand, although it was smaller, but coming from a country like Malaysia, gave me sort of the environment to sort of test myself and go beyond what I thought I could do. And once you achieve it, you just keep pushing that bar further and further forward. And again, um, all these roles wouldn't have been possible without the New Zealand experience. What kind of friendships did you make in New Zealand and are you still in touch with those people? One of the reasons why we chose New Zealand, uh, back to the, back to the uh, first question, was the multiculturalism of New Zealand. Uh, I have, to the question I have, um, I made friends not just from Malaysia, but I focused on building friends with Kiwis, local Kiwis, um, people from all around the world who came to study. But I'd like to just touch on very quickly about the Kiwis. They're the most simple and most easiest people to get along with. I mean, you go around the world and, and you meet New Zealanders around the world. They're the most welcoming and, and friendliest people to deal with. And from the day I landed in New Zealand to the day I left, that um, 
that generosity and 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 just being so welcoming helped me also in my adjustment period in studying in New Zealand and was also a very critical factor in making sure that transformation pushed on faster versus being a lot slower. They weren't so welcoming. So you loved New Zealand but you still came back to live in Malaysia and you've built yourself a very successful career here first at Malaysia Airlines and uh, now AirAsia. Can you tell us a little bit about your job at AirAsia? I've been in several roles in AirAsia. I've been here for eight years now. I was in the founding team of uh, AirAsia Rex, long haul low cost airline. I left, I left that job in 2012 uh, after we listed it successfully in the stock exchange. I'm now the group director of uh, network and fleet, which in essence means I sort of manage the 170 planes in the business in terms of where we fly and where we, where we fly from and where we fly to and working with governments and overcoming complex um, bilateral issues. And this role involves dealing with a whole range of challenges. Every day is different in terms of challenges. And again, I go back to New Zealand. That country and that education system gave me the strength to always be calm in dealing with pressures, always being positive in dealing with challenges, and most importantly, believing in myself. No matter how tough things get, and it does get very tough in the airline business, no matter how tough it gets, never lose faith in what you can do in solving it. Finally, what would be your advice to anyone considering going to study in New Zealand? I've had friends who study all around the world. I had the option to study anywhere in the world. I would still, till today, recommend New Zealand as a place to uh, study because it's, in terms of the academic curriculum, it's a great place to, um, to study. In terms of the teaching environment, it's a great place to nurture yourself. It's a great place to live in terms of the food and the multiculturalism. It's safe. But the most important lesson I got from New Zealand, and it, it holds true to me till today, was that it teaches you that, that being successful in the real world is not so much about how much you know, it's about how well you apply it, and it's about how well you engage people around you. And New Zealand is helped me achieve that, and I hope many other kids will consider this and their parents will consider New Zealand as a place to study. Sentul, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us today. Thank you.